Hey all, Fjorim here. In Satisfactory, there are two ways to distribute items to machines. Manifolds and load balancers. A while ago I released a video that stated that in most cases you will be okay with using a manifold, which is also usually more simple to build. But there are some use cases for load balancers too. For instance, if you are building a nuclear plant, you ideally want to minimize the amount of radioactive materials waiting on belts. Maybe you just like the fast startup that load balancers offer. Load balanced factories also look nice as the items are constantly moving on the belts. This video will show you how to plan your load balancers, both for even distribution as well as for different production targets. All the calculations in this video assume that you are using a single belt for materials. If you need more than one belt, which could happen if you need to distribute more than 780 items per minute, you will first need to distribute the materials to individual belts of at most 780 items per minute and then build the load balancers separately for each such belt. Load balancers are all built with splitters as they are perfect two- or three-way load balancers by themselves. This means that all input numbers that are products of twos or threes are also possible by chaining splitters. Examples of numbers like this are 4, which is 2 by 2, 6, which is 2 by 3, 8, 2 by 2 by 2, 9, 3 by 3, and 12, 2 by 2 by 3. You can see all the possible splitter setups for load balancers for up to 100 inputs on screen, and it's quite easy to calculate more if needed. It's also possible to build load balancers for other numbers, but more on that later. So, let's look at some load balancers for real cases then. First I have a pure iron node providing 240 ores with a Mark II miner. This can be turned to ingots in 8 smelters, so we need to split the iron ore in 8 equal shares. This can be done by splitting it to two three times in a row, as shown here. Once I connect this to the miner, you can see that all the smelters will start working at the same time, which is the biggest advantage over manifold. Every single machine in this setup is getting the same amount of ores. As mentioned before, it's also possible to build load balancers for other number of machines than those that are products of twos or threes. Let's take the same node that we had before, but overclock it to 250%. Now it produces 600 ores which require 20 smelters to smelt. Our list of basic load balancers shows that we can only build one for 18 or 24. So we need to build it for 24 and send 4 of the outputs back to the beginning of the load balancer, before the first splitter. In order for this to work, the belt you are using needs to have capacity for these extra items. Here you can see me building a load balancer for these 20 smelters. You can see that I didn't build the splitters for the last 4 outputs, as they would be combined and sent to the beginning anyway. Once again, when the ore is connected, all the smelters start producing ingots very fast. Oh, and remember to subscribe to get notifications for future tips and tricks videos like this. That really helps the channel to grow as well, so I see it as a win-win situation. Let's check how to build load balancer for different input targets next. This is a matter of finding the ratio that the items are distributed in. For instance, steel beams require 60 steel ingots, and steel pipes require only 30. If we have, say, 240 steel ingots to begin with, we can send them to two constructors for steel pipes and three constructors for steel beams. In this case the ratio would be 30, 30, to 60, to 60, to 60. This we can simplify as 1 to 1 to 2 to 2 to 2. To build a load balancer for this setup, we first need to figure out how many parts we have total. In our case it's 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 8. So we need a load balancer for 8 machines. We already built one before, so that part is easy. The end result is that each of the outputs has 30 steel ingots per minute. So we can simply combine 6 of the outputs to 3 pairs of 60 ingots each and feed those to constructors for steel beams. The remaining two outputs are sent to steel pipes. Similarly as before, we don't really need to do the last split for the two outputs for the steel beams, as those would get combined immediately anyway. But what if the production targets are numbers where it's not as easy to see the ratios? A classic example would be the recipes for quartz. Quartz crystal takes 37.5 raw quartz per minute, and silica takes 22.5 per minute. If we build one of each, we can match the output speed of a Mark 1 miner on a normal node, but if we want to build a load balancer, how do we do that? There are various ways to simplify the ratio 37.5 to 22.5. One way is to first multiply it with 2 to get 75 to 45. After that we can see that both sides can be divided by 15 to get 5 to 3. This is a ratio we can work with. 
We will once again need a load balancer for 8 items and 5 of the outputs will go to quartz crystal production and 3 will go to silica. Here you can see me building this load balancer. After building it, it's quite easy to see that some of the splits are unnecessary as the outputs lead to the same merger later, so they can be removed. In the end the load balancer becomes much more simple. I should also mention that in some cases you can use lower tier belts when building load balancers. Mark 1 belts transport only 60 items per minute, whereas Mark 2 do 120 and Mark 3 270. I will not go into details about how to incorporate these in your load balancers, as these require very specific production targets, but this is a good thing to keep in mind. And that's everything I wanted to say about load balancers. Each case is really a math exercise in itself, but I hope I was able to give you some tips on how to plan your load balancers. Feel free to comment below where you prefer them or manifolds. Also, don't forget to give the video a like if you found it useful. Thanks for watching, and see you soon!